The unsolved problem for grade 4 is, of course, the collapse conjecture from 1937. If you have not seen this problem, you need to click on the center of the screen and you will be whisked away to experience it in all of its glory with kids in the classroom solving it, or trying to solve it by your side. Another problem that was considered was the 1966 moving furniture problem. Imagine that you're trying to move into an apartment building and you're wondering what desk you should buy. Well, if the apartment building has a corridor that bends at 90 degrees and it, the um, width of that corridor is one meter going in, one meter going out, then you have to do some thinking. So for example, you could get a square desk, but you could get a desk bigger than that because you could get a half circle uh, desk as well and that, that you could rotate round. But what's the biggest area of desk that you could fit into your apartment? Well, it looks something like that on the right, but it's not exactly that. And uh, you can ask other questions like what angles are really, really bad for you to try to get into your apartment building with a big desk. Another problem that is probably more practical to implement is uh, to find sets of numbers where the product is equal to the sum. So for example, here we have 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, and that is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 plus times 1 times 1. So interesting, and there, it's not unique. Here are two other ones. Another interesting way to give your students practice with multiplication is through multiplicative persistence. Here we take the digits of a number and we multiply them together. So 59 goes to 5 times 9, which is 45. 45 goes to 4 times 5, which is 20. 20 goes to 2 times 0, which is 0. So there have been three steps from 59 to get to 0. So the multiplicative persistence of 59 is 0. There is one number under 100 that has a multiplicative persistence of 4. That's a good problem to start with. A good problem to end with is what is the largest multiplicative persistence possible? Well, that's unsolved. It looks like it's probably 11. The unsolved problem for grade 5 is at the intersection of art and mathematics. It comes from the world of origami. The question is, given creases on a piece of paper, how many ways can you fold it flat using all of those creases? So here we could first of all fold it down the middle and then we could fold it towards us to give that. We could also fold it away from us to give that. And another way we could fold it, which isn't obvious, is we could kind of open it up so we see the blue inside again, like this. So there's three ways to fold it in that direction, and then there's three ways to fold it in the opposite direction, too. So there's actually six ways to fold that piece of paper given those crease marks. This origami problem replaces one of the great games of human history, Perudo. Prudo was played in the 1500s between Atahualpa, the last king of the Inca Empire, and Pizarro, the Spanish conquistador, who eventually was responsible for him being strangled. Here we have three teams. The dice are rolled. They are rolled secretly. Uh, then red is going to go first here. Uh, red is going to make a bid. 26. That means that there are at least two sixes on the table, according to red. Green has to increase the bid or call bluff. Green does increase the bid to 34. There are at least three fours on the table. Blue doesn't have any fours, so blue thinks, ah, uh, bluff. So let's see if blue is correct. No, it was not a bluff. There are three fours on the table, so blue loses a dice. The dice are re-rolled, and we do it again. The person after the person who lost the dice begins afresh, so again, it's red who goes. Red is saying that, oh, red rolled a fantastic roll. Look at that, three threes. So red said, says that there are four threes, at least four threes on the table. Green says that there are at least four fives. And blue is going to play a clever game here. He's going to say that there are at least five threes. He's using the fact that red bid pretty high to begin with, so he's guessing that red is uh, going to <clears throat> not be 
too excited about uh, calling bluff on five threes. And indeed, red decides to keep on going with six threes, and green then calls bluff, and red loses dice. And you keep on going either until only one group has a dice left, or until one group is booted out. Depends on your preference. Grade 5 teachers are looking for giving students experiences on the number line, and uh, one of the best ways to do that is the recommend sequence. If you click in the center of the screen, you will see a video expressly made for uh, taking students all across the number line, positive and negative, with addition. Another great way to give your students practice on the number line is through a game that will be introduced to you with Tweedledum and Tweedledee if you click here. Uh, basically the way it works is that each student uh, secretly thinks of a number. So you have three students at the front of the class that each think of a number, uh, keep it between negative five and positive five, and then they pairwise get together and add up their numbers. So for example, two plus minus three that gives minus one, and two plus minus one, that gives plus one, and minus three plus minus one, that gives minus four. So that's the first thing they do, is they add up their numbers, and they announce what's in that green circle, they announce that to the class. And then the class has to figure out which are the original numbers. It's really cool. So uh, an excellent game to play with your, to play with your class. EKG sequences is a great way for you to introduce your students into finding common factors between numbers. So click on the center of the screen and it'll take you to a video that explains uh, this beautiful problem. Another beautiful problem at the intersection of art and math are reptiles and irreptiles. If you click on the center of the screen, you'll be taken to a video that describes these in more detail. Uh, but here's a single example. Here is an L shape, and I've given you two similar L shapes inside. You have to finish off tiling this L shape using all similar, uh, similar shapes. So I'll give you the solution. Here it is.